What up, YouTube? T-Movies here with Edward Norton's new movie, Marvelous Brooklyn, opening this week. Since the film takes place in, 19, in the 1950s era, I decided to go ahead and do my top 10 favorite 1950 movies. Now, this is some pretty cool movies of the 50s era. Obviously, lots of these films was ahead of my time, but I remember, I actually asked, you know, remember watching lots of these on uh, TCM and all that, and... You know, there's some pretty good stuff from the, the uh, 50s era. So, with that being said, here's my top 10 favorite 1950s movies. Alright, coming in at number 10, it is Roman Holiday. Now, it's where this, uh, by overwhelming by her uh, suffocating uh, schedule, this uh, touring prin uh, European princess named Anne, played by Audrey Hepburn, ends off taking a night off while in Rome. And so, she's, of course, like a um, sedative, uh, and she also, like, a uh, she also um have like uh these uh like uh, pills or sedative that she took from her uh, doctor as of kicking in, but she ends up falling asleep on a, a park bench and she's also found by this uh American reporter named Joe Bradley, played by Gregory Peck, who ends up taking back uh, taking her back to uh, her apartment for like uh for pretty much safety and so like at uh, work the next morning she ends up pretty much finding out of that uh. And, Find out that uh, Anne is actually a princess, so she he finds out uh, her identity, and so he ends up pretty much bet having a bet with his uh, editor that he can get like an exclusive interview with her tomorrow. But throughout the rest of the film, there's uh, like you know romance that um that happens between two. It's a really nice, cute, charming film. Uh, I mean, Aubrey uh Aubrey uh, Hepburn and uh, Gregory Peck both gave. Three solid performances, like they really had a great chemistry for one another. Uh, it's directed by William Wyler, who did a good job at directing. Uh, Eddie Albert also uh, fe was featured in this. Really nice, uh, charming rom com. I mean, they show this on TCM almost every uh, Valentine's Day, and it's a movie that still holds up today. If you've never really seen Roman Holiday, give it a go. All right, coming in at number nine, it is Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now this is one of the uh, you know movie uh, horror movie monsters from the golden age, uh, and it got released by Universal because it's one of the uh, Universal movie monsters, and it's where like this uh, specific uh, expedition ends up searching for this fossil along the uh, Amazon River, and he ends up discovering a, a prehistoric uh, gillman in the legendary Black Lagoon, but the gillman ends up uh, pretty much uh, returns. Uh, from the surface, you kidnap, uh, you know, Kay, the, who is, of course, the fiancé of one of the, uh, expeditions, uh, with whom he has also, uh, fallen in love with, and so the rescues has to try to find a way to, uh, free her from the creature, and Julie Adams actually placed, um, Kay here, and I thought she was great, I mean, this is actually the movie that Shape Out Water is sort of ripped off of, about the, uh, woman and, uh, fish, like, about the, uh, female and a fish uh, romance thing. They kind of got that from Creature from Black Lagoon. And it's actually a pretty good film. Like, it is horror. It's part romance. I mean, a film about a, a woman and a fish who ends up falling for each other. That is a weird concept, but man, Creature from Black Lagoon and even Shape of War made it work really well. Alright, coming in at number 8, it is one of the classic Disney movies, and that is Cinderella. Now, Cinderella is... It's a classic. I mean, it's one of the uh, nice, like uh, one of the um, animated Disney films of the golden age of cinema. And, I mean, you got Cinderella, who pretty much uh, wants to, like, go to the uh, royal ball, but her stepmother is not being... is uh, being hard on her, and... And so she, of course, uh, meets... pretty much uh, meets uh, this fairy godmother, voiced by Verna Felton, who ends up magically appearing and transforms her, uh, and transforms uh, Cinderella into a major princess. And it's, I mean, of course, you got the uh, Wicked Stepsisters was in this. I mean, this, of course, you got the uh, Three Mouses was pretty great. Uh, had some pretty great music involved. I mean, Cinderella is an all-time classic. It's amazing. Uh, great music. Great score. One of the most iconic Disney movies of all time, and it's a movie that's, it's a Disney movie that still holds up today. If you guys ever seen Cinderella, give it on the original Cinderella a shot. It's a really good one. 
All right, coming in at number seven, it is Alfred Hitchcock's Rare Window. Now, he did loads of other movies in the uh, 50s, but Rare Window is probably the best movie he's done in the 50s. Uh, of course, Psycho was released in the 60s, so... But uh, Rare Window was... Is, it's a classic. I mean, it's about this uh, photographer who ends up witnessing... That, uh, pretty much believes that he ends up witnessing a murder, and he's also, like, a fine... To wheelchair after a uh, accident, and so like he pretty much uh, tries to uh, find like you know find who the murder like uh, try to find a way to get the cops and stuff like that and and it stars uh, James Stewart. Uh, you also had uh, Grace Kelly, uh, Delma Ritter was in this. It's a really full black uh yeah I believe it was black and white when I was saying. Uh yeah, rare rare window is a really good one. It's creepy. It's it's very uh drill uh it has a it has a pretty great twist uh, towards the end. Uh, great performance by uh, James Stewart. Grace Kelly was great. Uh, another Alfred Hitchcock win. I mean, if you guys never seen Rare Window, it's a classic right there. I mean, James Stewart James Stewart was the man, and he really showed how great he was in us. All right, coming in at number. Six, it is Sunset Boulevard. Now, the movie is about this uh, screenplay writer named Joe Gillis, played by William Holden, who is like not um, able to, who is actually not really able to sell his uh, his work to studios, and he's also full of depths and and all. And so, like, uh, he ends up being this um, he he ends up being like this owner and this former silent movie star named Norma Desmond, played by Gloria Swanson, who ends up living alone uh, with her uh, butler and driver. Named Max uh, Von uh, Merling, played by uh, Erich Von uh, Merling. And so, like, Norma is, of course, uh, dempted and uh, believes that she would, like, uh, end up returning to Sylvia. And, and so, like, Max, who is also uh, her director and husband um, in the past. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, um, sorry for that. Sometimes people think that uh, my apartment is the boss, so. Yeah, anyways, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, of course, a movie about uh, old, like, classic Hollywood. Um, and, of course, uh, and of course, where, like, Joe ends up falling in love with the uh, aspiring, uh, also ends up falling in love with uh, this aspiring writer named Betty uh, Schaefer. So it's romance, too. It's a movie about Hollywood. Uh, it, of course, has a really iconic classic line of, I'm ready. A close up. I mean that that line has been played out to lots of movies, by the way, and lots of TV. Like if you guys uh, see that line, you prop the uh, line with um, where she of course um, says, "I'm ready for my close up now." You'll probably recognize that line and lots of other stuff. So yeah, but uh, yeah, Sunset Boulevard is a pretty good little flick. Like if you guys ever seen that, it's really good. Like this is a movie about you know, it's a it's a love movie about Hollywood. So. I'll, so I guess you could say it's like uh, it's like the 50s version of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in a weird way. But uh, anyway, coming in at number five, it is The Ten Commandments. Now, The Ten Commandments, of course, uh, Charlton Heston as uh, Moses. Uh, you also got Yura Brenner and, and Baxter. Uh, you even had Vincent Price. And of course, it's where uh, Moses is trying to uh, pretty much uh, manage to uh, lead... Uh, pretty much to lead the, uh, his people, um, you know, out of Egypt and across the, uh, you know, Red Sea, and of course the uh, classic iconic uh, part where he moves this, uh, out the seas and stuff. That is iconic. I mean, this is probably one of the longest movies you ever want to see. I mean, it's a good film, but it's not really a film I could watch over and over. Cause it is a really long flight. I mean, they literally show this movie around. Every time they show this movie, it will literally be around. Easter, or sometimes Christmas they show around. But hey, still classic. I mean, Charlton Heston, I mean, him as Moses was great casting. He played Moses perfectly. Uh, the year of Brenner was great. Uh, this has some great score, great cinematography. I mean, the direction was, of course, great. I'm trying to remember the uh, actual director who did this. Uh... Dang, I forgot the actual uh, director's name. Dang, he's he's a popular director too. I can't even really remember uh, his name from the top of my head. Dang it. 
shit. But anyway, but still, yeah. Uh, Ten Commandments is still a terrific one. I mean, if you guys never, for some reason, never seen Ten Commandments by now, give it a go. It's a classic. All right, coming in at number four, it is Some Like It Hot. Now, Some Like It Hot is a class, is another classic. I mean, it stars Tony Curtis, uh, Jack Levin. Uh, Tony plays like this uh, saxophone player named Joe, and while well, um, while well, his buddy, who's like this long-suffering um, guy named uh, Jerry, played by Jack Lemmon, is uh, improvisative uh, to like a quick plan, and they end up escaping uh, to Chicago uh, with their lives. And so, like, they end up pretty much disguising themselves uh, as women uh, be- after they uh, end up witnessing, uh, after, like, uh, bad people uh, are after him after they witness, you know, like, a uh, killing. And so, like, uh, Joe ends up pretty much pretending to be this uh, millionaire to win, like, the band's uh, sexy singer named Sugar, played by uh, Meryl Moreau. And so, like, Jerry ends up finding himself uh, being pursued by a millionaire, played by uh, Joey Brown. And things have- end up... Uh, Getting um a turn um a turn for the worse, and then uh he also finds out that um the monsters are very close in on him. I mean, some like it hot. It's great, you know. It's a very it's a great classic. Marilyn Monroe was great. Her like uh, on screen chemistry with uh, Jack Lemmon and uh, Tony Curtis was amazing. I mean, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, of course, played major females. It's kind of odd if you look at. It. Uh, you also, it's directed by Billy Wilder, who's one of the best directors of that era. George Raft uh, did a great job at directing. Yeah, Some Like It Hot is a classic. I mean, if you guys, it has some great music in it. Funny, it's entertaining. If you guys have ever seen Some Like It Hot, give that one a go. Alright, coming in at number three, it is another Charlton Heston movie. And, and another Wayne Wilder movie, too, by the way. Uh, and that is in her. I mean... The classic chariot uh, race scene is probably the most iconic scenes in movie history. Uh, Charlton Heston, of course, like uh, pretty much, you know, plays the elite of a uh, uh, Ju- uh, Judia. Uh, you also had um, Steve Boy, Jack Hawkins was in this. This movie won loads of Oscars. I mean, Ben Hur is also actually a remake too. I mean, before this it was like a silent version, but Ben. Hur- was actually the one that lots of people know of. And they also remade it with uh, Jack Houston, and that movie sucked. But the original Ben Hur with Charles and Hessen is just iconic. It's also pretty long. I mean, it's a long movie. But it's really great. It's I mean, heck, um, back in the days when this movie was shown, they actually had intermissions. Uh, That's right. Back in those days, they actually had intermissions for long movies like this. So, I mean, I, don't, I still don't think they have the now, but yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, Ben Hur is is a really good film. If you guys never seen it, give it a go. I mean, they also show this around Easter loads of times. I mean, this and Ten Commandments gets shown around Easter plenty of times. All right, coming in at number two, it is Rebel Without a Cause. Now, this movie uh was pretty much the breakthrough film the uh film of James Dean's career. Now he only had started three films. Um. This East of Eden and uh, what's he starring? Um, can't remember his third film, but uh, James Dean he was an iconic uh, actor from his era. I mean, tragically he passed away at a very young age. Uh, he passed away at I think age twenty five or I know it was in his twenties. Uh, and this movie is terrific. I mean, it stars uh, James Dean as this uh, teen troublemaker named Jim Stark. He's like supposed to have like a clean state, and uh, he also searches for like uh, stability. And so uh, he ends up pretty much uh, forming a bond with this disturbed classmate named Plato, played by uh, Sal Men- uh, Menio. And he also falls in love with this local girl named Judy, played by Natalie Wood. But Judy is also the girlfriend of this uh, na- of pretty much this uh, neighborhood tough guy named uh, Buzz, played by Corey Allen. And Buzz ends up conf- pretty much violently confronting uh, Jim to like uh, challenge him to a uh, Drag Race, so there's that too. Uh, it's directed by Nicholas Ray, who's who's also an iconic director of that era. Uh, it also featured Dennis Hopper. Uh, it actually featured the classic scene of "You're tearing me apart." That line is seriously um used in the room. I mean, I, 
Like, I think I could probably see why, because if you watch the movie The Zastars, James Franco was kind of, in, uh, not James Franco, but uh, Tommy Wiseau was very influenced by uh, James Dean, and, you know, there was lots of James Dean talk in The Zastars. So I guess I can see why they decided to use that line in the room. But still, I mean, James Dean was great. Uh, Natalie Wood was terrific. A great coming of age flick. Um, a nice uh, rebel based film. I mean, who doesn't love you know movies about rebels? If you guys never seen Rebel Without Cars, it's it's another fifties classic right there. All right, my number f one favorite movie of the nineteen fifties goes to Singing in the Rain. I mean. This movie is one of the most best musicals of the era. It's a classic, memorable music in this. Uh, I mean, Gene Kelly as a uh, Don uh, Lockwood. This is, of course, a movie about making movies. This is also a movie about Hollywood, sort of like how uh, Sunset Boulevard was. Uh, you also had um, Debbie Randall making her film debut. Uh, you had uh, Jane uh, Hagen was great in this. Uh, Gene Kelly also a uh, co-directed this movie. It, it has some of the best songs. I mean, Singing in the Rain, uh, Make Them Laugh. Uh, I mean, a lot of these songs was actually portrayed a family guy, by the way. So, yeah, lots of songs you'll hear in this movie you might recognize for Family Guy. So, next time, you, like, if you guys ever watch Singing in the Rain, pay close attention to some of the songs because you might recognize some of them that was spoofed on uh, Family Guy, so, yeah, but, uh, of course, a classic rain scene when he's, like, dancing, like, of course, singing and dancing in the rain, that is iconic, I mean, that cannot really work in real life, either. I literally tried that once, and I just slipped on my ass, so, yeah, never try, uh, singing in the rain in real life, people, but, uh, yeah, this is really iconic, and, you know, it pretty much gave the world Debbie Reynolds, and of course Debbie Reynolds gave the world uh, Princess Leia, so I miss Debbie Reynolds. I was really sad when she passed away, like, especially um, when she passed away the day after uh, Carrie Fisher died. That was really heartbreaking to, uh, to read about. But still, I, I mean, Debbie Reynolds was, she was magnificent in this movie. Uh, you know, Gene Kelly, like, he was, he's pretty much one of the most iconic, him and Fred Astaire all want two of the most iconic dances of all time. I can imagine Dancing with the Stars premieres uh, back in the uh, era. I think uh, Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly will actually participate on Dancing with the Stars because, yeah, they they are they're iconic. Like they were iconic dancers. Now, granted, Fred Astaire wasn't in the movie. I'm just using him as a good reference for best dancers. But uh, yeah, if you guys never really seen Sea in the Rain, give it a go. It's I think it is one of the musical series. I mean, it's probably not my favorite musical of all time, because my favorite is probably still Grease. But it's definitely up there as one of the best musicals, and yeah, it's a really great film. Like, this is not even a black and white movie either. It's full in color. Like, not everything back in the 50s was black and white. But uh, still, um, Saying the Rain is... I think it's got lots of Oscar nominations, too, if I'm not mistaken. Gotta double check that. But, uh, yeah, Saying in the Rain is, to me, it's the best movie of the 50s. All right, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. Uh, 10, Roman Holiday. 9, Creature from the Black Lagoon. 8, Cinderella. 7, Rare Window. 6, Sunset Boulevard. 5, The Ten Commandments. 4, Some Like It Hot. 3, Ben-Hur. 2, Rebel Without Cause. 1, Singing in the Rain. Now, there are those of other movies I probably could have added. Let's see, there's um, Forbidden Planet is a good one. Uh, the original Day of the Earth is still. All About Eve with uh, Betty Davis. On the Waterfront with uh, Marla Brando. Uh, the original Ding, Ding from Outer Space. I prefer the remake. Uh, North by Northwest. Uh, Streetcar Named Desire. Vertigo. The Bridge on the River Quad. Lots of people will probably add Bridge on the River Quad, by the way. Uh, John Wayne's Classic Searchers. Numb. High Noon, uh, The African Queen, Strangers on the Train, The Incredible Shrinking Man, It Came From Outer Space, 12 Angry Monkeys, oh, 12 Angry Men, I meant to say, uh, Seven Samurais, which of course got remade with two, um, in the, uh, Magnificent Seven, From Earth Here to Eternity, 
The Curse of Frankenstein, uh, Pass the Glory, Two Dads in the League Under the Sea, The Seven Year Inch, uh, To Catch a Thief, Bio M for Murder, The Ass Flat Jungle, uh, To Catch a Thief, um, The Original Father of the Bride, although I kind of prefer the uh, Steve Martin one, to be honest, yeah. But uh, lots of pretty good stuff from the 50s. Anyway, let me leave it to you guys. What are some of your favorite 1950s movies? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is T-Movies signing off.